and the suspect writing a note alluding to the fact that he had CTE. So we just wanted your expertise on if we could start as basic as just what CTE is and what it does to your brain on a fundamental level. Sure. So CTE uh, is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and it's a neurodegenerative disease that we've seen uh, in a lot of former contact sport players, uh, football players, ice hockey players. Uh, and it is uh, characterized by a buildup of tau protein. It usually begins in small spots in the frontal lobes. But over time, with aging, it uh, starts affecting widespread regions of the brain and can cause profound memory loss and even dementia. How does that happen? Because we hear so much of CTE related to football players. You mentioned hockey. Can just one injury lead to these defects years and years later? Like, how does that spread? So it isn't just one injury. It's actually all the repetitive hits. Uh, and a lot of people think it's the concussions, but it isn't just the concussions. It's the hits to the head uh, that take place over a player's career. Uh, so it's the hits that don't cause any symptoms, the hits that we consider minor hits that the player plays right through, uh, asymptomatic hits. But those hits can be very substantial. They can actually be of equal magnitude to the concussive hits. And over time, with enough of these hits and enough uh, strength to these hits, uh, players develop risk for this neurodegenerative disease called CTE. And speaking of this specific suspect, he's in his 20s. It's been years since he played football, allegedly. Um, mm -hmm. How does that linger for so long? And is there any way to treat it? Well, there's no way to diagnose CTE with uh, certainty during life. Uh, but we know, we've I've described it in teenagers and young adults in their 20s. Being a high school football player uh, is certainly a possibility for CTE. We have a recent study where we found about 30% of former and, uh, high school players uh, had CTE. Now, that's a very uh, select group of people. It doesn't mean 30% of the general population of, of high school football players have CTE, but it's a distinct possibility. Um, and um, it is something that uh, is subtle at first. Uh, it causes symptoms like irritability, inattention, uh, maybe behavioral changes like aggression or impulsivity, um, but over time gets worse. So it's very conceivable that a 27-year-old like Shane Tamara uh, could have CTE. It's a possibility. And, you know, the NFL, it, appear, it appears that's who he was targeting. Um, I mean, they've made strides or so it seems to an outsider to help this issue, right? Like they have like those extra cushions you can put around your helmet. Um, ha have those been helpful in your like community and space? What are the thoughts on on the improvements, if they are improvements? So the NFL has definitely made rule changes to the play of the game that make the game safer for the players, but they haven't done enough. And they really set the stage uh, for all high school and even college football players there. Uh, it's, it's the cumulative hits to the head, the number of hits that occur to that uh, occur over a player's career. And that's length of playing career, number of playing years. That's the risk for CTE. Uh, the NFL is doing very little to reduce the hits to the head during the play of the game. Uh, they need to do much more than just the, the helmet design, which is never going to prevent CTE. It's really uh, rules of play and styles of play, eliminating the hits to the head that occur in practice as well as games, paying attention to the players, monitoring the players for the number of hits they've sustained, and actually keeping track of the players over time. They do very little uh, for the long-term care of uh, former football players. And you spoke about CTE leading to dementia. In this case, if this is CTE, I mean, this is like beyond dementia, right? Like this is clearly like an insane mental break. So what can CTE lead to when it comes to mental health? Well, well, you know, I should point out that this could just be a mental, I should say, could be a mental health sure. issue unrelated to football. Um, but we have seen individuals with CTE that have had uh, substantial breaks with reality, and it's becoming 
I hesitate to say a pattern, but it's certainly something we've seen before. There's precedence where a former football player has a break of homicidal violence. Uh, and this, this kind of behavior is obviously something we need to prevent. And I think this is a call, uh, an urgency. It, it, it's a call to this public health issue that we really are not addressing in full. We need to understand more about CTE. Players that have uh, issues uh, need to seek medical help, uh, health professionals. And we need to, as a society, need to do much more to prevent CTE, lower the head hits in football and other contact sports, and take care of the players who are suffering. And I, I'm not a scientist, but out of curiosity, I mean, obviously the brain controls everything in our body. Right. Why, you know, some hits over, not some hits, multiple hits over time. How can that lead to such like severe injury where you could have a break with reality? Well, you know, uh, nerve cells are probably being lost with most of these hits. There's tremendous inflammation. There's vascular changes. So even though the hit stops, uh, the injury to the brain persists and it's not, it doesn't recover, especially if they're getting uh, repeated hits uh, in, a, in a short amount of time. So the brain isn't allowed to recover and it sets up a situation where there's a, a vicious cycle inside the brain where you've got inflammation, vascular change, uh, changes to the nerve cells and eventually tau deposition, uh, which goes on even though the trauma, the hits to the head have stopped. Very interesting. Um, Professor, anything I might, may have missed, anything you would like to mention again not a scientist so any questions i didn't ask well i just think it's a this is an urgent call uh for uh uh, us to do something as a society about the risk for cte that's experienced by amateur uh contact sport players it's not just the professional athletes it's the high school players and the college players who are also at risk and that's where we need to address the real changes in the games well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time.